Hello guys, in this video we're looking at the most practical family cars we can get for under five grand at the moment. If you're looking for exciting, thrilling, interesting cars, you've come to the wrong place, goodbye. If you're here for practicality, getting all the stuff in the car and not having the car let you down, you've come to the right place. Keep watching. I've done this with families in mind, with probably young kids, or at least one that's got a car seat in there and you know you maybe got a push chair and stuff like that to think about so we're looking at that practicality for families um, under five grand so it does limit the market a bit but there's some really really great cars in there for under five grand and there's there's one at the end that's a bit of a surprise and um, would take a, a certain kind of person to get it I think you've got to be someone that looks at not too concerned with the outside shall we say if you're a younger person with a family but yeah it's an interesting one I've just thrown it in for a laugh but hope you like the video guys as always give us a thumbs up and keep watching so the first car we're looking at sort of revolutionized family cars a few years ago didn't it it's a Nissan Qashqai uh, for those of you that don't remember the Qashqai was the first um, that I can remember certainly of um, the, the sort of crossovers and it was a massive hit they came out and people just bought them in their droves after that after the success of the Qashqai everybody wanted a crossover and you even got the top brands like Mercedes bringing a crossover out I mean everyone was after it it was the the new sort of car market that everyone seemed to want a piece of Essentially, you've got your, your hatchback, like your, your Vauxhall Astra, your Ford Focus, and it's a little rides a little bit higher, higher driving position, maybe a slightly higher roof line, a bit roomier inside, and just a little bit more practical. And people do enjoy that high sort of uh, rise height where you can see over the traffic a bit better. But this, this particular one's like a 1.5 diesel uh, Accenture spec, uh, 58,000 miles from new. Uh, clean on the HPI. Um, what else do we know about this one? Oh, it's just an advert for the garage. I hope when they do that. Tell me something about the car. Obviously, this is now a 10 year old car, and this is the first generation of Cash Kai, but I still think it looks all right. I don't think they've aged too badly. I can certainly think of cars from that era that look a lot worse than one of these. And they are very practical, you know. I mean, it's a really good sized boot. Fairly wide opening, so it's easy to get things in and out of the boot. Uh, not the biggest uh, family car you can get now. Obviously, the middle seat's a bit of a stretch. But, um, yeah, they make a lot of sense to a lot of people. And you can certainly see why they've been so popular over the years. <clears throat> Next, we're going to go to sort of Ford's version of it, if you like which is the, the Focus C-Max. And you've got a lot of the benefits of the full Focus, so cheap parts, relatively. Uh, Second-hand parts are easy to come by. Obviously, tons of them on the road, so you, you'll always find these in breakers yards and second-hand parts on eBay and all the rest of it. Very practical car. Again, they don't look too bad. They haven't aged that badly. I mean, it's not a good-looking car, is it, a C-Max? But it doesn't... You wouldn't look at that and think, oh, bloody hell, that's a really old one. It, it just looks like a C-Max. It looks every bit the practical family car that it is. Little colour screen there for the radio. Again, interior is all nice enough, just very practical. Built in some blinds on this one. This one's titanium spec. You can see the middle seat there is a, a bit better on this. It's more of a proper seat. Although it's it's narrower than the outer seat, you could actually imagine a human sitting in that, uh, even with a, maybe a child seat in, in one side or t'other. Um, you've got the little trays there in the, on the back of the seats as well. We've got those in one of our cars, and my kids go mental for them. They're always messing about. I've actually thought about taking them out because they're just constantly messing about with the trays, but I'm a killjoy like that. And this one is 4985, a new, per new MOT on purchase, eight service stamps, which is quite good for a 2011 car. RAC warranty, 
uh, 70,000 miles on it. It's got USB connection, which is useful nowadays. Rear parking sensors, rain sensing wipers, remote locking, traction control, aircon. So it's all right, isn't it? Uh, cruise control, HPI clear. You know, and you could do a lot worse than that for um, for five grand for a, a practical family car. Next one we're going to look at is a great example of how not to list a car for sale. Okay, let's look at this one. That's the first picture. So when you're looking on eBay, that's the picture that comes up, number one. Um, again, terrible picture, terrible lighting. You couldn't pick a worse time of day probably to, to photograph a car. Um, so this one's a Vauxhall Insignia. See Insignia Elite Nav. Oh, it's just gone over five grand. So it shouldn't be in here really. It was four thousand eight hundred when I started this. <clears throat> it's got two hours to go. I guess it'll go for like five and a half or something. This one is a two thousand thirteen model with forty one thousand miles. It's got loads of history and all the rest of it. The thing I particularly liked about this one while I've shown you this example is there are older cars with loads more miles on them that are on for a lot more money than this and it's simply because it's been listed badly so don't be put off by someone that lists a car like this and, and go for one instead where they've, they know what they're doing, they've polished it up nicely, they've taken the pictures at all the right angles because sometimes you'll get a better car looking at horrible, horrible car listings. And you might have to do a bit of the work. You might have to ask some questions because they haven't put the details in the ad. But sometimes it pays off. Now with the Insignia, I'll probably get absolutely destroyed for this in the comments. But again, I've had a few of these as higher cars over the years. And I find them really comfortable to drive. They... Um, feel much more refined than than they probably should or than their reputation would suggest uh, the diesels are really good on fuel they're very quiet on the road i think they're a nice place to be with all the old voxels they have lots of like electronic sensors that occasionally fail and it's one of those things where the sensor doesn't cost a lot of money but you have to get someone to do it for you if you're not mechanically inclined and you know, it can just be a frustration. Um, and I'm sure there are one or two other problems, but with, with all these cars, as I said before, always take someone mechanically minded with you and you can go onto sites like Parker's and all the rest of it and look for the common faults. When you go and look at the car, look specifically for those. But the, the great thing with the Insignia is they have a huge boot and you've got that massive hatch, so access couldn't be easier. Things like uh, a kid's push chair or something like that, absolutely ideal. Uh, they make a really practical car that it's one not too many people are going to think about as their, their sort of family wagon. Uh, next one is the, probably the smallest one we've got here today. It's the Kia Seed, uh, it's the 1.6 CRDI. It's a 2014 model with 60,000 miles on it, and it's only five grand. I, I think that's really good value. Uh, Kia makes some really, really good cars. Forget about all the stuff you used to know about Korean cars, like tin cans and thrown together. They've they've come to sort of rival everyone. Um, obviously, the Korean cars have really long warranties and things like that. Although this one will be out of it now, I'm sure. But it's HPI clear. not bad looking little car is it um the interior on these is not the most exciting to look at there's the boot it's um that's not the most practical it's a decent size but it's not a huge opening so this sort of you've got quite a big lip down into the boot and the sides come in a bit but um you know you useful boot but maybe not one if you've got one like a huge push chair or something um yeah, the interior doesn't look the most exciting in these cars, but they're actually really well put together and quite good quality, surprisingly so. And the doors have that nice reassuring thunk when you close them. 
I hate it when you get in a car and you close the door and it just sounds like you've just knocked two tin cans together. That they do have a nice thunk. So um, if that's important to you, then it gives good thunk. There's the interior. There we go. There are more spacious cars out there, but I just thought 2014 Kia Seed at under five grand is actually quite a decent car. Okay, then we've got the 2012 Seat Altea. It's a 1.6 diesel and the manual version. It's only 103 horsepower, so it's not going to win any drag races. But uh, again, very spacious, practical family car. I, th I think it's quite a good looking car as well for you know a car in this class. If you're just looking for a practical car, I think that's quite a nice, nice looking one. Um, obviously say it's VW Group so you'll notice the few similarities between VW, Skoda, uh, Volkswagen, Audi etc, the steering wheel being one. Um, there we go, let's have a look at some more details on this one. This one's got 61,500 miles, uh, it's the manual gearbox, 1.6 diesel as I said. Six months warranty, breakdown recovery, uh, Bluetooth and AUX connection, dual climate control, cruise control, privacy glass, traction control, start stop, tire pressure monitor, two keys, blah blah blah. So it's okay. It's not. It's not going to set the world on fire spec wise, but <clears throat> it's got the basics. Um, HPI clear. It's one to think about. Definitely. So next we're going to the we're going to second hand French cars under five grand. <gasps> so this is a 2014 Renault Scenic 1.5 diesel. Now what I said about taking someone mechanically minded when you view a car really comes into play with a, an old French car, in my personal opinion. Again, beat me up in the comments if you want. But um, French cars are sort of notorious for electrical faults, have been over the years, and sometimes the build quality is not amazing. And sometimes if you need mechanical work, the labour involved can be huge because they do strange things. Like, I can't remember which car it was, but I'm sure it was an old Peugeot where you had to take the front axle off to change the battery or something. So <clears throat> always take a mechanic with you, please. Uh, so these are a, a decent, again, a decent looking car for what is a practical family bus kind of thing. Um, this is a five seat version, but I think it's a nice looking car. And inside, obviously the quality in the interior is not going to be as good as in some of the cars that we've seen here because Renaults are not known for that. Um, you've got the trays and they probably go down if you put a plastic cup on them or something. Um, little digital dash there you've got the blinds again again it's just like a super practical car if you've got family especially like young kids um, low mileage sat nav heated leather what is the mileage 67,000 I wouldn't call that low it's just all right isn't it five grand 16 inch alloys rain sensitive wipers bluetooth Carmen at TomTom Tom Live. Okay. Carmen at TomTom Tom Live. So that's obviously the sat-nav is a TomTom Tom system. To be fair, probably better than the sat-nav in a lot of the sort of better cars. So it always bothered me why more brands didn't put a, a sat-nav manufacturer's sat-nav into their car. I mean, my Volvo now, sat-nav's fine, but it, it doesn't look great. And the information and stuff's not amazing. Um, we went to Spain last year, or actually a year before, I think there was a bit of a pandemic last year that stopped us from going, and I hired a car and I got a uh, C4 Cactus, and to be honest, the sat-nav in that, it was just like a TomTom -tom system, it was 100 times better than the one in my 35 grand Volvo, so there you go, take note, Volvo, put a TomTom -tom in your car. Uh, there we go, five grand. Next, 
This is a tale of two Picassos. Okay, I'm going to show you why you need to look past the year, the mileage and everything else and look at some more of the details. First thing, right, it's a nice colour. Guys, please do me a massive favour, alright? Just give me a thumbs up on this video or leave a comment below or hit the subscribe. Do one of those things and I'm going to love you forever. Thank you. Silver with the privacy glass, it looks quite cool, doesn't it? Nice looking car. Yeah, I think this is this is what French cars do well. The, the, when they do quirky design, I think French do it really well. And I think they've come back into their own in the last couple of years. I think some of the, the nicest looking cars on the road now and most daring design are, are French. Uh, if you look at like the new Renault 5 EV that's coming out, uh, it looks amazing. That's what a French car should be. Anyway... Right, look at the alloy wheels. So they look like somebody's taken an angle grinder to them or a shotgun or something. Obviously diamond cut, so they'd be quite a lot to get refurbished. But this is a car dealership. I know it's only a used car dealership, and obviously not a high-end one. There's a little dent there or something. Um, or they've tried to... That looks like it's got a load of filler in it, actually. It might be a really bad repair. But... With a dealership, they sh when you buy a car from a dealer, it should have a certain level of polish to it and things like that should be dealt with. If they're not, it suggests to me that it's maybe not the best dealer. Also, look at the other cars from the dealer in the background. They're absolutely filthy. It doesn't feel like a dealership where they're trying to put the best cars out. It looks like a dealership where they're trying to turn cars around quickly. And I know they're cheap cars, but chuck a bucket of water over it, for God's sake. Make it look like, um, you know, you want to sell it and you've looked after it. If you're not putting the effort into stuff like that, what's the mechanical side of it like? The other thing to look out for on this one, which I would warn anyone against, this is a 1.6 diesel, right? And let's find the picture. Um... 1.6 diesel and it's got a tow bar on it it's a reasonable sized car for a 1.6 diesel engine and that's been used to tow as well that's been under a lot of strain I wouldn't go near that car with a barge pole if we go to the next C4 now this one's a nice kind of Vindaloo aftermath brown so yeah, it's a, it's a not very nice colour. There will be better examples of these around. Um, that's got scuff on the alloy as well. Forget everything. Um, you can see the other. All the cars are clean at least, uh, and um, I don't know why they wouldn't just do the scuff on that alloy for the cost cost of it. So the car's really well presented inside. It's obviously had a full valet. This one's 83,000 miles. It's that same 1.6 um, diesel engine, but it's VTR plus spec. So it's a it's a decent spec level on this one. It's at the sort of the higher end of, of their spec levels. Completely HPI clear. 12 months MOT, 12 months breakdown cover. Um, what else have we got on there? Cruise control, traction control, climate control. Touchscreen, media, Bluetooth, USB, DAB, full electric windows, electric folding mirrors, parking pilot, fog lights, alloy wheels, two keys, HPI clear, bodywork excellent, uh, drives very well, excellent condition, 4695. That's a much, much better car than that other one. Um, so always look for those, always look for a tow bar, because if something's towed, you've got to think it's had that strain of towing so you want to make sure it's something that's got plenty of torque otherwise it's been running that car ragged and look at things like how well it's presented and how well the other cars are presented it's nothing it's a small bit of effort but if the dealer's not putting that effort into their cars you can pretty much guarantee that they haven't serviced it they haven't checked for a lot of faults it just shows a lack of care and a lack of professionalism and the next dealer 
might have at least taken the effort to chuck a bucket of water over the cars and, and tidy up any damage. Just something to look out for. Ford S Max, this one. Um, massively practical, these things. You've got the seven seats, so the two seats that you can pop up in the back or just have it as a huge, huge um, boot. You can't really talk about family cars and not not chuck an S Max in there because um, they're known to drive really well for the size of car, which is something you expect from modern Fords really. They tend to drive well. Nice and spacious inside. Uh, but you've got three proper seats there as well. So if you've got two kids in car seats, you can still get an adult in as well. So if it's you and your partner and uh, you want to take a friend somewhere or a parent of another child, and you you can sit another adult in there comfortably before you've even like deployed the, the little seats in the back, which are here. You see that you just pop this cover down, pull the seat up, and there you go. And if not, you've got that big flat, boot which is I mean look at the size of it it's huge and you put the other seats forward and pop them down and you, you're not far off having a van there it's a massively practical car uh, 4780 that one um, 1 1.6 diesel again so again it's it's not a huge engine for a car of that size but it's good enough um, media player CD MP3 compatibility um, so spec wise that one's pretty naff it's got bluetooth for phone which is good um electric windows and mirrors well yeah spec wise that's pretty base level that's the ztec so on fords i always look at sort of titanium plus normally uh, uh titanium or titanium x for that good spec level but there you go if you just want a functional practical family car you can't go far wrong this one is, I think, the smallest, uh, or rivals the seed, but I just thought this was such a good example. And maybe if you've only got one child or you, you your child's out of a pushchair, uh, something like this makes a bit of sense. The, the good old hatchback. So it's a BMW 1 Series. Now, this is an example of how you should list a used car. This is a fantastic list in here. So they've taken nice pictures in a nice setting. Cars obviously had a really good clean inside and out, probably had a valet. Showing you each one of the wheels, and they're all in really good condition. Doesn't seem to be any curbing or anything like that. And look at that, you've got a picture there with all the previous service history and receipts. You've got old MOTs, old bills, everything that's happened to that car is laid out. That immediately tells me that the person that's owned that car cares about it, and they've looked after it, and they've taken a bit of pride in it. And that, you can't get better than that. They've got everything. That's what you want to see with a second-hand car, especially one under, like BMW under five grand. You want to know it's been well looked after because if something does go wrong, it can obviously be expensive on a BMW. The parts are expensive. So that's great. I love that. Well done, this person. HPI clear as well, and they've got that in the photos. Um, so this one is uh, it's the 118D, uh, two litre diesel, uh, leather interior, sat nav, uh, f um, mobile phone, Bluetooth connectivity, full service history, new MOT, 4945. Massive spec. Leather interior, sat nav, tournaments MOT, just service, car needs for nothing. Bluetooth phones, and on lights. So yeah, that's a, a great, great buy, and that's how a used car should be listed. Well done. So the last one's a bit of a wild card. This is full old man dad spec. It's a Skoda Superb, but the old style. Um, I mean, look at that beast. But look at the value for money, and look what a big, luxurious car you get for the money. So don't write it off because it looks like something that your dad would drive, possibly to a funeral. So big, luxurious beast of a car. Obviously, they use these things for taxis. They'll go on forever. Um, really, really nicely put together inside. Say that familiar sort of, uh, that, that steering wheel you've probably seen in an Audi with a different logo on it or a VW. 
but yeah, massively practical, big, luxurious car. Um, and look at the boot. It's a tonking great thing. Hugely practical, get everything you want, lump it in, and it's gonna just swallow it up with ease. Uh, this one is a uh, 2010 model, 72,000 miles, um, full leather interior, electric seats, uh, heated front and rear seats, <laughs> sat nav, Bluetooth, phone, USB connection, front and rear parking sensors, cruise control, 18 inch alloys, Zen on headlights, full dealer, full main dealer service history. Uh, it's got uh, MOT until February next year, HPI clear. As far as value for money goes and the amount of actual car you get for your money, uh, under five grand, that is a bloody good buy. It just looks like your granddad's car. Sometimes a granddad's car is nice. Do you know what I mean? So what did we think? That Skoda Superb's a bit of a beast, isn't it, for the money? But yeah, it does look like something you, your granddad might drive, but there we go. Um, hope you like the video, guys. If you like this one, we're doing this series on used cars, and we're going to do used cars at different price points. So there'll be more family car videos, but they might be under 10 grand, under 15 grand. We've done one on luxury cars so far, sports cars, there'll be loads of others to come. Um, there's a bit of a playlist for that, which should appear up there if I know what I'm doing. If I don't, it might appear over there. And aside from that, I do lots and lots of car leasing videos and things about car finance, uh, helping you get more value for money. So please subscribe to the channel if that's the kind of thing you like to watch and hopefully see you next time.